should be something number four tonight is why historians never mention the Battle of Adwa since we were talking about guns a lot in that uh, last prompt. Let's build on that a little bit and talk about this battle that's not spoken of much. Why is the Battle of Adwa so important to African history? It's important because it's one of the greatest victories against white supremacy and imperialism. In the 19th century, European countries colonized the entire African continent. They met at the Berlin Conference in Germany from November 1884 to February 1885 and just sliced up the entire continent like a piece of cake. Britain, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Belgium, England, you name it. And then Italy came to try to take its colonial possession, Ethiopia. And before the commander in chief left Rome, General Oreste Maratieri, he promised the king of Italy, at that time it was still a kingdom, King Umbato, that he was going to bring back Emperor Menelik II in a cage so he could be displayed in the zoo. Because he was confident, all this notion of white supremacy made them really believe that Africans are basically savages, backwards. There's no way that any African army could withstand a European army. So to the shock, the Battle of Adwa, March 1, 1896, lasted no more than six hours. The Ethiopians killed about 3,000 Italian soldiers captured almost another 3,000. General Baratieri himself fled from the battle scene. They killed two generals. They captured one general and marched them back to Addis Ababa, the capital, which, by the way, was founded and named by Empress Taitu Betul, the wife of Emperor Menelik. And Taitu herself was on the front line with 6,000 men under her command. They made the 3,000 prisoners of war, the captives, the table were turned. Now they made them work for many, many months under African supervision. So now you have Europeans tasting how it feels to work under slave-like conditions being ordered and commanded by Africans. Italy paid millions in reparations and then the captives were released. Now this is not taught widely in the history because it would explode the myth of white supremacy, that Africans are inferior, Europeans are superior, and no way could Africans defeat Europeans in armed battle, in war. And that is why the story is not widely told by the Italians and by fellow Europeans. In fact, some of the accounts were preposterous at the time of the battle, soon after the battle. Some of the magazines in Europe claimed the Ethiopians were actually Europeans. <laughs> so Italians had lost against other Europeans who just happened to be in Africa. That is why this history is important. The legacy is important. Africans all over the world, whether they call themselves Africans or not, African descendants, must know this history. It is empowering. All right. Um... Sorry, that's uh, my mistake. Uh, should have been talking about before. Why historians never mention the Battle of Adwa? Uh, let's start with Carl on this one. Carl, what are your thoughts on, on the prompt and what you saw in the video? Well, uh, I've heard of the Battle of Adwa. Uh, the reason history, well, he mentioned it already. The reason why historians don't mention it is because it shows Africans organizing and uniting to defeat a European power. That's probably, that's why they don't mention it. Uh, for some reason, you know, they like to portray Africans as not being able to fight or being weak warriors, even though every colonial power had African army, you know, the, the British used the Maroons in Jamaica, you know, the French, you know, they had the King's African rifles. So they always had Africans fighting, but for some reason, they didn't believe Africans could fight. Um, 
So that, that's why they didn't mention it. Uh, it shows that the Europeans' desire to conquer the entire continent of Africa, it was going to be frustrated. And uh, there was another battle with the Zulu. Um, I'm, pro I'm probably going to say this wrong. The Battle of uh, Izen Izenwana, which was the greatest uh, defeat that was inflicted on the Europeans in a, by a colonial power. So, you know, the Zulu massacred them. And, but we don't ever hear about that battle. You know, you never hear about the battles that, that were done by the Ashanti or the, you know, the Zulu or the, you know, all throughout, you know, Africa that was done in, in, in um, fighting for our freedom because it's all a part of the propaganda. The European has always made, be, wants to be seen as invincible. He wants to be seen as unbeatable. So these, these events where they got defeated um, by a military power who in their mind wasn't superior to them. Uh, even, even for example, they don't, they don't rarely talk about the Haitian revolution. When I was in college, I was taking early American history and my history professor at the time, he talked about the Louisiana purchase and he didn't tell, he didn't say what led to the Louisiana purchase. He just said the French sent an army down into the Caribbean and they got yellow fever and they died. That was what he told us in school. Now I knew better and I called them on it. Now they didn't just die of yellow fever. They died because they got their ass kicked in, in Haiti. But the idea that, that Haitians, the African people could rise up and defeat what was then the mo most powerful colonial, three colonial powers, the French, the British, the Spanish. They don't want to talk about that in history. So they just kind of obscure certain things about it to keep the, the truth from being known. And that's why there's so much, at least in my state and here in Florida, they're always talking about teaching critical race theory. What they really don't want to teach, they don't want to teach, at least in public schools, black children the truth, which is why we have to educate our own children. You know, I didn't get any black history taught in school. My mother, my father taught me. I didn't learn that in school. I had to get education at home. They bought us, they bought me and my brother books. So that this type of knowledge about this battle, they're not gonna talk about that. They're not gonna talk about them getting defeated. They don't even wanna talk about when they used to lose in World War II. Whenever we have these movies and these videos about World War II, they always leave out certain parts. Who won what battle? Why was this battle fought over? The, the history being obscured is always a, it's a continual thing, which is why we have to continue to fight for the truth, all right? That's all my thoughts. Thank you, Coco. No, thank you for that, Carl. In the chat, uh, Nama X says it cycles. We defeated them for over 3,000 years and Kemet as well. Tables are turning again. Uh, Real Black Gentleman was talking about the subtitles. Real Black Gentleman, what do you have to say about the video in terms of the prompt? Uh, I think that um, it just is a testament to Ethiopia and like, you know what I'm saying, uh, at its heart, Africa, and you know what I'm saying, you know, the idea that, you know, there's people who will determine their own destiny. And even though Ethiopia, like, how would I say it? They, um, Ethiopia is funny because I, I might say that they've been colonized by like religion or whatnot, but like, you know what I'm saying? The Ethiopians are, you know what I'm saying? They, they hold their own in a very unique way. They have to. They're kind of. They, they kind of are at the um, center of a lot of a lot of activity in that region. You know what I'm saying? Like it. it the way that um. You know what I'm saying? They lost um uh, Eritrea. You know what I'm saying? Which I think is a setback for Africa. You know what I'm saying? You would think that Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? Should have access to the sea, which kind of makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things that I noticed that I, I think a lot of people like miss when they think about Ethiopia, but like. You know, you know, core Ethiopia. Like, I mean, what am I trying to say? It's like, you know, I, a lot of people already said that a lot of people don't like to. The, they'll 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 talk about Africa and how you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? They'll just say how it's bad. They won't talk about any kind of colonialism, any kind of history, which is a thing about Africa in general that I noticed that you know what I'm saying is like history, whether through Islam or through colonial machinations, they don't like to teach people history. They don't like to teach people like what happened 30 years ago. I mean, like remind people, which, you know what I'm saying? I find, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I chalked that up to like, um, 
like a type of um creationism, but I just think that um you know what I'm saying the few places, the few little areas, even within a lot of the 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 um countries that may have been like designated as colonies, the few peoples out there who really you know what I'm saying held it down and and really bucked against you know what I'm saying the outsiders and the invaders, like you always can learn from those people across the continent, like the Zulus, like. I mean, the Zulus, how would I say it? Like, it's like South Africa and the Zulus. Like, that's something that, you know, you can look into and, like, see, like, how they're, how they're, how they're really doing against, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, world powers. They're really in, at the mix of a lot of world, uh, like, you know, issues. And, you know, a lot of times you can, you can try to find connections between, like, you know, Ethiopia and South Africa and how they can, what they have in common and what they don't. Um it's always important that, you know what I'm saying, recognize the, you know what I'm saying, the battles in history, the, the you know what I'm saying, like how those people who fought, who fought, you know what I'm saying, who didn't like enslave their peoples and stuff. You know what I'm saying, they, what I'm saying is Europeans went across, you know what I'm saying, the West Coast of Africa. There's a lot of people who didn't give in. Maybe they might have gave in the third time, but that first wave, that second wave, they're always strong, you know what I'm saying? Always, I always think about that. Um, I'm going to pass the mic. Thank you for that, Real Black. Gentlemen, uh, let's go to Bakari. Bakari, what are your thoughts? Uh, okay, uh, that's great. No, uh, I knew I didn't. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know it was called Adwa, but I've known about Ethiopia defeating uh, Italy. It should be taught more, uh, even our uh, historians, even those people in the so called conscious community. I've never heard them speak of it. But it's good because you will see their superiority. Like, uh, you know, we'll see that they are not superior. They are not supreme. Uh, even if you go back, like Carl mentioned some stuff that, you know, they won't teach it. So we have to teach it. And I respect the fact that he said uh, he learned at home. His parents taught him. That's great because that's what it first teaching started. But like, study the one eyed queen. Uh, <laughs> I raised my voice and then a couple of people don't come back over here no more. But like Gas, he liked to talk about Rome. But why don't we talk about how the one eye, the one eyed queen, uh, uh the, the, the one eyed queen, um, I can't Armenian, I can't say her name, right? But just Google the one eyed queen who defeated Rome in Nubia. So we have stories where and they had to ask for a peace treaty, and it absolutely favored Nubia. Uh, cause she didn't bow down and she did defeat them. And those are some of the things that, those are some of the stories that we do need to be teaching our children. And those are some of the things that we need to be talking about. Cause we, cause whenever we talk, we always talk about what somebody did to us. Uh, it was this guy in, I can't even think of his name now, but I want to say he was in Senegal, Senegal or Gambia, right there together. And in the, Akmavits, you know who I'm talking about, them Berbers, uh, Muslims, or, uh, you know what I'm talking about? And you will see how they bowed to him. We, we, we did not always just take an L, but even sometime when we talk, we always talk about what they do to us and how they did us and what they still doing to us. Then the word white supremacy come out of the mouth and it's like it runs together. They are supreme because the only thing we know is what they did to us. We need to learn and we need to talk about the times that we defeated them. Yes, that's great to know. That is great to know about Ottawa and those other places, those other names that Carl mentioned and just a couple of things that I mentioned. But then if you come back to the 50s, 40s, 50s, and look how when the KKK said they were going to go tear up Mount Bayou, Mississippi, 15,000 strong black men, women got together, went out with their uh, guns and bullets and made the KKK bag down, ran them off, and they could not burn the town down like they thought. These are the things that we do. These are the things that we do need to talk about because if we talk about them, we can see us doing something and we can see us like, oh, if we stick together and we decide to stand to this beast, you can make the beast yield. But as long as we always talk about what they do, the victory, we can't even imagine a victory because we only talk about what they have done. That's why we like to say we can't do this. We can't do that. Can't, can't, can't. It's hard to imagine a victory 
when the only thing you talk about is what they have ever done to you. And on that note, I yield the mic. Thank you for that, Brother Bukari. Well, well said. Well, well said. Uh, let's go to Oni next. Oni, what say you? You know, actually, uh, uh, Mil Milton actually had uh, courses in uh, Brooklyn. So he would, uh, I think it was like a free journalist course. Um, although you did have to get his book, I think. But uh, I have his book still, so it's pretty cool. Um, Milton Alamadi. Uh, why historians? I mean, because if you go to the wrong people, they're going to tell you the wrong things. You know, it's not that historians don't mention this stuff. It's that, you know, the phrase is Negroes always knocking on the wrong door, talking to the wrong people and asking the wrong questions. You know, if if I go to my neighbor um, and I say, uh, no, like, let's say, I, in fact, in fact, let's say I go, I go to some Jew and I say, hey, man, what, what do you think is the uh, most important, you know, historical, you know, like what's the most important historical figure, right? He's not going to say, oh, I think Marcus Garvey. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to say that. He's going to tell me, oh, I think Moses or some shit. Why? Because he's supposed to. That, that's what he thinks. You know, uh, uh, you know, we the only people that want to tell our L's. White folk, you know, what's interesting about white folk is this. They go through this. Like They only tell you they go through slavery like nowadays. And they only say it just to dismiss black folk, really. But they go through this long period of, of being conquered by the Moors, by the Arabs, and they just call it the Dark Ages. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, they just call it the Dark Ages. They don't, they, don't, they don't go into any more detail. They say little is known about this period. Meanwhile, realistically, the, the you know, El Andalus was this advanced colony, you know, this advanced system of, of you know, kings and sultans and and, and, and new technology and scientists and, and just a, a glorious golden paradise civilization. But white folk say, oh no, it's the dark ages. You know, uh, nothing was going on though. Dark, dark, dark. And, and, and it was like, shit was popping in, 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 uh, in South, Southwestern Europe. And, and the reason why um, they don't say it is because they took an L. 700 years. They just brush it over, you know, but they don't talk about it to the point where you ain't even know that it happened. Like somebody needs to tell you, oh, you heard of uh, the Moors and the land? They're like, you're like, what? You know, and, and this is not, it's not, I'm telling you, it's not even like a short time period. This is a longer time period. I don't know. I don't know how long Rome was. I'm not going to say it's longer than Rome. I don't know how long Greece was. I'm not going to say it's longer than Greece, but it was more recent than the two. It was more impactful than the two. Uh, the, the numbers that we use, come the Arabic numbers, like we say, they come from this period. The, this, this Latin speech, this, this sort of stuff. They all come from this area, right? From this, from, this, from, this, from this moment. But white people don't talk about it because you don't talk about your L's. So again, if you're knocking on the wrong door, talking to the wrong people and asking the wrong questions, yeah, they're not gonna be. I go, oh yeah, you know, you guys were, you guys fought bravely in Ottawa. No, they're gonna say, well, man, you know, you lost, you lost like a chump in, in Shanghai. What are they gonna say? They, they go, they gonna talk about their victories, and we the only people want to talk about our losers. You don't talk about our losses. We the only people. Well, you know, oh man, you know, man, shoot, man, you know, we got, you know, man, I'm a, I'm a descendant of slavery. You know what I'm saying? This white boy getting enslaved by, like, you know, this white boy getting enslaved by the Romans in England, right? Thousand years of ignorance. He don't, he don't say shit about it. You know, in fact, in fact, uh, I think I forgot who it was, like Himmler or some shit, was 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 trying to show Hitler their their their, their great civilization, uh, and and Hitler's like, all he found was a bunch of b bunch of sticks and and things that just show that you know ancient Germans were just sitting around campfires while the Romans was doing shit, right? He's like, let's not talk about it. Why the fuck this one? Why the fuck this man want to talk about us being be, being primitive, showing us you know little, little little dagger points? Nobody gives a shit about that stuff. We he, Hitler might as well have said we ain't Negroes. We ain't trying to big up some 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 losses we took. We ain't trying to big up the knocks in our heads. We ain't gonna say we children of of prehistorians, you know. That's it, you know. I mean, I mean that's why you don't hear because you you asking the wrong people one. And, and two, 
because uh, because the people you ask it, it's an L for them. And, and and they have the damn sense to not tell you they L's. That's it. Yeah, and all my ex uh, seemed to echo those thoughts. He said, only teaching some serious lessons tonight. Um, with that said, let's hear from Tanzan, who's from... You could say from the general region, right, Tan? Yes. Um, so, so how do you me, feel about it? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So in my opinion, I, I think it shouldn't just be, you know, why are they not teaching and, you know, why are historians? Which historians? I think if you read the right kind of history, and unfortunately, though, you know, that's another problem that a lot of our history has not been written or has been written by other people. So that's something that we still have to accept. But this one is recent enough in, in modern history to be able to find the sources for it. So the first thing to say is why do people never mention it? I think in this day and age, with this day and technology, it's it's something that people really um, can find for themselves. Unfortunately, it's, there's no systematic way, there's no canon of uh, putting things together. You know, even um, the CRT, that was simply a slice of, you know, of, of history, but it's not the overarching story. So, I, um, yeah, we have to come up with, with that curriculum. And I know, Koku, you are working on, you know, getting the books and things that, um, material that we, we need to study, reference, and in places that, you know, if someone wants to go on that search, it has to be for now a personal one because there's no uh, social place for, for one to learn these kinds of things. I would say that the first thing is is that people should just generally learn uh, military history and tactics not just history because people are saying oh you know historians yes history is good it's just the general you know this happened and then that happened and all of that stuff but when you're learning about military history you're learning about the tactics you're learning about the terrain you're learning about you know the history as well but also even the the personalities and the characters you know the way generals you know go at war the way you know they think and even after the, the attitude and, um, you know, actions after the victory. So war is, is a very, it's a very exciting thing to learn about. And one of the ways to really teach it, I would say is for example, video games. Like that's, that's, that combines the excitement of history with, you know, actually being in it and strategizing and, and those kinds of things. So in the next, um, you know, maybe decades or whatever, maybe not decades, but people should be able to combine those kinds of lessons where you can actually visualize those kinds of scenes. You can put those things together and so on and make a game out of it. This is something that I see that we're also lacking in, in the way that we can make entertainment, but we're not very good at making games, um, you know, um, because I look at the way people always say, oh, ha, 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 you know, white man can't jump, they can't dance. But one thing that they can do is they can make a game out of everything. And I'm not even talking about the modern visual video games. I'm just talking about regular games. When they get together, they usually have, you know, they're always playing some kind of game, even Monopoly. Monopoly is, is an economic game of risks and chances and, you know, fate and um, yeah, yeah, and the reality of it, and and so on. So it, it's a it's a game, but it's a it's a way to prepare you to you know for for your future. And and so so are so many other games. You know, they have charade, charades, or whatever it's called. You know, it's it's a, a visual linguistic game. It's a, it's a game of guessing. Or I know black people have the what the the dice, the ones that they throw on the ground. Yes, so those ones also have some artistic merit, but also the children's games, you know, Legos, those kinds of um, games also teach engineering skills and and, pat and pattern building and, and, and so on. So, oh, wow. Anyway, so all I was saying was, um, why don't they mention it? Yes, because it's obviously because it's going to be a stain on, you know, on their 
historical reputation and they, 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 they have no need. History, as I said, is written by the victors and the victors have no you know, reason to mention their losses. So, yeah. All right. Thank you for that, Tan. Um, let's go to Buana. Buana, what say you? So, I've heard what everyone has to say. And something that jumped out on me uh, in reference to what the brothers are saying is that um, references, references, I think Tan talked about it. So, I'll use my time to just give good references. So, first, for, for the for the list, I'm sure all of the panel would have either read or watched uh, information on these particular things that I'm going to mention. So first, for anyone who would be interested in, in the Battle of Ottawa, there is a person who is, his name is Haile Garima. He is a film director uh, from Ethiopia, but he lives in Washington, D.C. He wrote, he uh, made a documentary. I think he made a, either a movie or a documentary called The Battle of Ottawa. Anyone can look it up on the internet, and if they're interested, maybe purchase the, the DVD if they were interested. But he, he goes through what actually happened uh, with the Battle of Ottawa. So anyone interested in that could look up Haile Garima. He made the movie Sankofa. Okay. Uh, also, um, one of the one of the, the premier characters that came out of the Battle of Ottawa is uh, Emperor Menelik. Now, Emperor Menelik is a he is, uh, I think he's Haile Selassie's grandfather, but he is really one of my favorite emperors in, in terms of African history. You know, you could really look him up on, on Wikipedia or, or try to find him in a book if you have to, because he was really a, a, a personality coming out of Ethiopia. Another thing that was mentioned, I think when he was talking about the Moors in Spain, uh, people use, usually when they mention Ivan Van Sertima, I always hear they came before Columbus, they came before Columbus, but um, uh, Ivan Van Sertima wrote uh, many other books besides that. And one of the books is called The Moors in Spain. You know, because I think that when he was mentioning what they in fact did in, in, in uh, European society. So look up that book, The Moors in Spain. And also, we also talked about another um, thing where, where we were talking about science and, and technology and medicine, things like that. Ivan Van Sertima also wrote another book called Africans in Science. So those two books, if anyone is interested, based off of many of the things that we would have discussed here tonight, these are the, your references. So you don't know, no longer have to wait for someone to teach you these kinds. You could empower yourself and try to find out, find these books and, and documentaries and inform yourself. You, we don't no longer have to wait for someone to give us information. We can empower ourselves to go find it ourselves. Y'all guys got the reference, so y'all do it with, with, with your wish. So I, I'll stop there. Any comments from anyone? Did I get to everyone? Okay. Any further comments from anyone here? All right. Uh, wasn't expecting that. Hold on. Let me grab you to read topic number five tonight. That was a good discussion just now. You guys, make sure give the show a thumbs up. Share it with your peoples uh, so that they can join in, in, in the discussion live or after the show posts on YouTube. Make sure you check out all the other shows on KWAZ Radio as well. Shoot the breeze topic number five tonight.